All right. So the the key thing here is is that you know you see inside the problem we're asking for complex zeros, and so you know this is exactly the same thing we were doing earlier in the unit. Um, we're going through and we're going to be looking for zeros. So we still start the process the same way. Um, you know, in my mind, what I'm thinking here is I start this guy off, and uh, let me pause real quick. So in my mind, we start the process off, and I'm like, okay, I've got four. So I'm going to go through here, and I need to list out my zeros, and then I also need to, I can go ahead and find my factors. So this is what's in my thought process as a teacher. So I know I'm going to have x equals, x equals, x equals, and I don't know why that's happening. Ah, let me stop the video and, and see if I can fix this. All right. So I, I've got my four zeros. I'm going to list out my four factors. I know I'm going to have four zeros, excuse me, because it's a four theory function. Um, they're giving me a hint here that some of my zeros are probably going to be complex, which means they're going to have an I in it from their conjugate theorem um, piece that we just watched. So let's go ahead and pull it, put this in our calculator and see what's going on. So remember, we go y equals, clear out what you had, and type in this new guy. So x4. 2x third, oops, I forgot my plus sign, no big deal, remember that this is like Microsoft, so the difference is, is that I need to, if I need to enter something into this guy, then I need to go ahead and be where I want to enter it, and you can see where it says INS, insert, I hit second, insert, and that'll allow me to put that plus sign in. Alright, I arrow my, get myself over to the the side again, and now I have plus x. I'm going to use a shortcut key. Darn it. You know, today has not been the best day for me recording videos. x squared uh, minus 8x minus 20. Okay, so got our function in there. Let's just go ahead and take a look at the graph. Remember, if you haven't used your calculator in a while, maybe go zoom, choose number six to make sure we have a square window. Um, and what we're trying to take a look at here is, is what do we think the zeros are going to be? So right now we're thinking negative two and positive two. So let's go look at our table and verify that. So second, table. And sure enough, you can see right there from our list that uh, this guy, negative two and positive two, Sure enough, because we get a zero out and a zero out. So that's going to go ahead and get us started for this process because now we know that we cross the x-axis at those two locations. So from here, we move down and we start our synthetic division. So we set up our synthetic division box. We've got 1, 2, 1, negative 8, negative 20. Our coefficients, 1, 2, 1, negative 8 negative 20. Remember that's going to be my remainder right there. And in this case here we take our zeros. So our first zero that we have is negative 2. We take that guy, we bring down the 1, we multiply negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. Put the number right there and we add. That gives us 0. We take 0 or negative 2 times 0, we put it right there, we get 0, we add, and it gives us 1. We take negative 2 times 1, we put it right there, that's negative 2, we add, we get negative 10. We take negative 2 times negative 10, we put it right there, we get positive 20, we add, we get a remainder of 0. So at this point right now, because we started with an x to the fourth, we have 1x cubed plus 0x squared plus 1x minus 10, which we turn around and we do synthetic division with it. And so we take the 1, the 0, the 1, the negative 10. There's going to be our remainder. And we already divide into negative 2. We know it works. And now we're going to divide in the second one, which is 2. We do the same process. Bring down the 1. Multiply. Put it right there. That's 2. We add. We get 2. We multiply, we get 4. 
we add, we get 5, we multiply, we get plus 10, we add them, we get a remainder of 0. So now remind yourself, you started off with an x to the 4th. You divided by a factor of x plus 2. That means you took an x out. That left you with an x cubed. You then divided by a factor of x minus 2, right? Because you divided by the, the 0 of 2, so that's really a factor of x minus 2. That took you to the x cubed down to an x squared. And now at this point, it, you know, we go back and if you review in your mind what we said, we said, okay, once you get to this spot right here, we have a quadratic, we have two choices. Choice number one is product sum factor. Choice number two is the quadratic formula. All right, well, we try a product sum factor just real quick. We just, you know, do that whole process and we do it right here. PS, because I know it's not going to work. I say, okay, my product is five, my sum is two. What are the factors of 5 that when added together give you 2? There's none. So that doesn't work. And that's because we know the answers are going to be, um, are going to be complex or imaginary. So now I use, pull out my quadratic formula. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, so from our problem right here, we know that our A value is 1, we know our B value is 2, we know our C value is 5. So we plug that in. So X is equal to negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 2. Oh, goodness. Sorry, give me a second here. All right, so negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 2 squared minus 4 times a times c, all of that over 2a. So remember our previous sections, I discussed with you the importance of don't plug all of that into your calculator at one time. You know, I, I think that's a really bad habit. So what I want you to do is I just want you to do what's under the radical because that's going to reveal what's really going to happen here with this problem. So we have 2 squared minus 4. If you want to use parentheses, the parentheses are great because you can really see and make sure you have it plugged in right instead of using multiplication sign. I just lost my mouse. All right, so that comes out to be negative. And there we go. That's, so that kind of is like that, that, you know, key thing that's really pointing out what's happening here. So we have negative 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 16 over 2. Alright, so let's close that out. At this point, we should be able to finish this guy off and kind of really grasp what's happening here. And so um, we say we have x so we come out of this and we say we have x is equal to negative 2 plus or minus, so remember 16, the square root of 16 is 4, but then we have the negative we need to deal with, the negative comes out as an i, all of that over 2. And so from here, we say x equals, let me get rid of that equal sign right there, we say x equals, we can take, let me say this, in your head, what, here's what's really happening, we have negative 2 over 2, plus or minus 4i over 2. Oh, 4i over 2. And so at this point, what's happening is, is that we end up coming out of this thing with a, a negative 1, right? So if I said 2 into negative 2 and 2 into positive 4, but I like to, I like in your head, I want you to think this. I don't want you, because sometimes uh, what I see as a teacher is a lot of people will forget that the 2 goes into the 2 and into the 4. So we list it out this way. It's just creating a safer situation for us. All right, I've got to pause one more time to be able to get through this. All right, so our final answer here for this piece is when we pull it out, we get x is equal to negative 1 plus or minus 2i. So we come back up to our zeros, and we say, okay, 
negative 1 plus 2i and negative 1 minus 2i because that's that plus or minus right there. So then we write it in as our, our, our factors. So that's x minus negative 1 plus 2i. And I'm just kind of, like I said, I'm just using the color and the parentheses to let you see how it falls in place. And x minus negative 1 minus 2i. So at this point, the question you're going to be solving is going to ask for the 0. You're not going to need to do the factors. But if you had to do the factors, you can see that there they are. Um, you know, obviously, we talked about this conversation that, you know, some, you know, my math lab might want you to, if this question came up, they might want you to distribute the negative sign to those guys inside before, you know, to simplify, let's say. But for what we're doing right here, this is us. This is, this is what the question's asking for us. What are the remaining zeros? If I give you a polynomial and I tell you it's complex, list all four of the zeros or all three of the zeros or however many you have. All right, so that wraps up unit 3.5. Um, and this would be the, you know, this kind of has a little crux there with the complex numbers.